Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. In this tutorial things get a little bit more exciting, we'll implement shooting using ray casting. If you need this type of top down movement please check this tutorial first. Woohoo, let's get started. Ray casting is very powerful mechanism provided to us by Unity's physics engine. In its simplest form is just shooting a ray from a given position at given direction and checking out if any collision occurred. If so, we know everything about that collision, from the exact position, normal of the surface to underlying collider. Let's start the implementation. First we create an empty object and call it gunpoint. Remember that this object has to be a direct child of the character, as we want it to move and rotate with it. I add a small icon and position it exactly at the end of the gun. That will be the position we'll be shooting from. Oh, and one more thing, because the ray casting is completely invisible, we'll have to implement some visual feedback for the player. We'll add bullet trail and the muzzle flash. Now we'll create the bullet trail. We'll need a material for that, so I'm creating a simple circle sprite. Then I'm creating a material, changing it to unlit texture and assigning the circle I just created as a texture. Then I'm doing a little bit of cleanup and finally it's time to create the actual bullet trail. I'm creating an empty object and call it bullet trail. I'm adding the trail renderer component to it. Because I want it to be extremely small I change the width to something less than 0.1. Then I add extra key and move it to zero, this way the trail will be decreasing in size over time. I want it to disappear very quickly, so I change the time to 0.02. Then when it stops, I want it to automatically destroy itself. Then I added the material we created and change the texture mode to tile. I don't want it to have any influence on lightning, so I change the cast shadows to off and uncheck the receive shadows checkbox. I also change the order in layer to 100. However, this is not that much relevant as the trail renderer is a 3D object. So if we want it to behave properly, we'll have to handle its Z position properly. Let's create a bullet trail script. We can do it directly on the object. I'm starting by doing a little bit of cleanup. Now we'll extend the vector type a little bit. As you probably know, there is no easy way to change just one axis of a vector. So we'll create a new extension method that will allow us to do exactly that. I'm starting by creating new vectors extension class. I'm making that class static. Within the file I create public enum axis containing x, y and z values. Then I create a public static method returning vector free. I call it with axis. The first parameter preceded with the word this indicates the type we extend. Then we need two more parameters. Axis we want to modify and the value we want to assign to it. Then we simply return a new vector free with either new or old value depending on what parameter has been passed. I give a little bit more details about extension methods in the tutorial about sprite sorting. I'm working on a series about scripting in Unity, where we will explore a lot of useful and interesting concepts and mechanisms. Subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications if you don't want to miss it. Time to implement our bullet trail script. We want the object to move very precisely from position A to B, so let's create two variables to store the start position and target position, then a float variable progress to indicate where exactly between those two points we are, then serialized speed variable, which will control the amount we increase our progress. In the start method we set the start position. We want it to be equal to the transform's position, however we've modified z-axis. Basically we want to make sure that our trail is somewhere between the level and the camera. Then in the update method we increase our progress by time delta time times speed. And then using clerp we calculate the new position. Then we create a simple set target position method, which allows us to set the target position from outside the script, at the same time ensuring the Z position is exactly as we need it. We go back to Unity and make the bullet trail prefab by dragging it into the project files. Then we can safely delete it from the scene. Finally, time to implement the actual shooting. We open the player script. We add four serialized variables. First, to store the gunpoint transform, second one bullet trail to start the prefab we created, then float weapon range with defaulted value 10, and then the animator will use later to implement the muzzle flash. Then in the update method we call the shoot method which we'll implement next. We create a private method shoot. We check if the left mouse button has been pressed. If so we set the trigger shoot on the muzzle flash animator. Then we perform our raycast. 
We set the origin to gunpoint position, the direction to the sprite's direction by using transform up, and finally we set the range using our weapon range variable. Then we have to instantiate our bullet trail. We use the instantiate method and pass it three parameters. The bullet trail prefab, gunpoint position, and our transform's rotation in the 3D space. Then from created trail object we extract the trail script. If our raycast returned a collider that it hit, we set the target trail position to hit point. Also, this is the place in code where you want to implement the consequences of the hit, like damaging the enemy. If you don't know how to do it, don't worry at all, we'll implement it as a part of next tutorial. If the ray didn't hit anything, we set the target position to a place weapon range away from the gunpoint. Our shooting has been implemented. Before we test it, let's comment out the line using muzzle flash animator. The only thing left is to assign the gunpoint and bullet tray to the variables on the player script. Fantastic! Time to implement muzzle flash. Under the gunpoint we create an empty object and call it muzzle flash. Then we'll need two simple sprites, circle with very soft edges and the muzzle flash effect. You should be able to create them without any problem using a free program like GIMP. I make sure the muzzle flash is exactly at the gunpoint position and then I drag and drop my sprites to make them child of it. Also here I make sure they are at the right position. Then I select the muzzle flash and open the animation window. I create new animation, muzzle idle. Before making any changes I make sure the red record button has been pressed. Now I change the opacity of both sprites to zero. Then I create another animation, muzzle flash. In the middle of the animation I make the opacity of the sprites full and then on the first and last frame I change it back to zero. Then I change the animation duration to something very short, like 5-6 frames. Now it's time to open the animator. First I create the transition from idle to flash. I uncheck both has exit time and fixed duration and set all the other settings to zero. Of course I also need to create the parameter of type trigger and call it shoot and add it as a condition for the transition. For the transition from flash to idle I leave both of the checkboxes on, set the exit time to 1 and all other settings to 0. It's time to uncomment the line triggering the animation in the player script. The last thing to do is to drag the muzzle flash object to the right variable. And we are done! I hope you learned something useful. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye!